if you want something new this year, guess what? You got to do something new. God wants to give you and me a new hope, a renewed purpose for living. And he wants to do this by giving you and me new ways of doing things. Let's look at this passage again. God says, see, I have already begun. Now think about that for a moment. God says he is already at work in your life, in my life. Do you not see it, he says? The fact is, some of us don't recognize God's working in our lives. The fact of the matter is, Jesus says that both he and the Heavenly Father are always at work. Imagine that. The Father and the Son are always at work. You know, God doesn't sleep. And he is always always at work in your life trying to bring about the best for you. Maybe it's time to let the tag team duo of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to get to work on your life. What does God want to do in your life? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. For some of us, all we see is a thick, impenetrable forest, dense undergrowth, a jungle of problems. We see no possible way out. We're exhausted of trying to figure things out. We see an oppressive wasteland where there is no relief. And God says, don't you know, I will make a way where there seems to be no way. I will create rivers of abundance, of refreshment, of joy in your life. I will flood your heart with eternal springs of living water. I will create new life. That's what Jesus promises. How do we access this new life? What practical steps can we take in repentance? If we truly change our minds and do things God's way, first of all, you and I need to spend time alone with God, seeking Him for direction. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him. And that's the key. In all our ways, submit to Him and He will make your paths straight. Do you ever feel like you're going around in circles? Do you ever long for a straight path? Do you ever feel like a hamster on a wheel? A lot of effort, but you're not really getting anywhere. Do you ever feel confused by the circumstances in your life? Well, here's a very simple action step. Trust God first instead of our own human intuition. You get that? Trust God first instead of our own human intuition. Now, if you know down deep in your heart that everything is not the way it's supposed to be, that things really should be better, and you want to see changes, don't hesitate. Change your mind today. Find out what the Bible says about your particular situation and don't debate it. Don't discuss it. Just do it. Submit to him. Now, we don't like that word submit. We think of win-lose. But, you know, submission to God is a win-win, not a win-lose. It's a win-win, my friend. Because only then do we embrace the best in life. What does God want for you, my man? The best in life. And when you and I submit to his best, it's a win-win. <laughs> God's ways may not always be natural to us human beings. His ways may not always be easy. But 
they are good and they are uncomplicated. The old hymn says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy, to be fruitful, to be content, to be satisfied in life, satisfied in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Like Billy Graham used to say, God says it, I believe it, that settles it. You know what? Study to find out what the word of God says and just do it. So what have we learned so far? If you want a new birth, a new hope, a new life, a new direction in a new year, then embrace it, chase it, make it your own. And what is that new birth? A new way of doing things, a new agenda in life. Surrender your control of your life over to God. Find out what the creator wants to do with your life because his agenda is the best. It's a win-win. Embrace it and do it. All right? Now, part of that is going to be developing new ways of thinking and new ways of doing things. Right? Get to know God through his word to help us make wise decisions in our lives. The Bible puts it this way in Isaiah, for I am about to do something new. Okay, new things, right? See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Now this may be a little difficult. We're going to have to blaze some new trails. And anytime we need to establish new habits, new patterns of behavior, it takes a little overcoming inertia, right? It takes a little bit of effort to create that pathway. But you know, God is going to do it. God is going to be there in your life to make those things happen. Sometimes when forging new paths, through the wilderness, uncharted territory, virgin ground, it may be a little confusing because, you know, hey, this is not what I'm used to. So is God going to help me? Yes, he is. He offers a couple of promises. Number one, clarity through confusion. How do we enjoy clarity through even confusing circumstances? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Right? We studied this. We looked at this. What does that mean? He will uncomplicate your life. You know, it is said the quickest distance between two points is a straight line. Well, that's what the proverb, uh, the guy who wrote the Proverbs is saying. God's going to make your path straight. Not meandering, not rabbit trails, but give you a straight, direct path. Bible also talks about rivers in the desert. Rivers in the desert. I look at this and I think of hope in the heat. When the going gets tough, right? How do you keep going? When the going is hot and dry and weary, God will provide rivers in the desert. He will give you relief for the weary and the thirsty. How do we become refreshed? When life is dry and weary, when we're going through the tough times, David says this. O oh God, you are my God. At dawn, I will search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry, parched land where there is no water. You see, God has promises and strategies for us to get us through the tough times in life. But first, we must Seek him first. Notice that David says, at dawn. At dawn I search for you. 
He realizes that God and only God can satisfy the thirsting of his soul. He realizes only God can truly fulfill him and give him the meaning that he is desperately longing for. And thus, who does he go to first? At dawn, he goes to God. Make it a habit in 2021 to seek God's first. Don't ask your friends who gossip. Don't consult the astrology or the stock market or, you know, your Aunt Mabel. Seek God's God first. At dawn, I search for you. Make it your habit, your healthy habit to seek God's God first. Also, we need to be in tune or filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, there is some degree of debate. What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? But when you boil it all down to its most basic, it means simply to be controlled by, influenced by, your life built around a relationship with God and his Holy Spirit. Let's look at these words. Therefore, do not be foolish. You see, there's clearly in the Bible a description of people who are foolish or unwise, but understand what the Lord will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. There it is. Be filled with the Spirit. How do you do this? Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. But let's just pull out a few things for us to wrap our brains around. Number one, know the Bible. Know the Bible. The scripture says, don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Well, you got to know what he says so you can trust it. The Bible is your instruction manual in life. You can't trust God if you don't know what God says. Get to know that Bible. It will save you from grief. It will save you from terrible mistakes. It will bring meaning and purpose and wisdom into your life. It will help you get along with your wife, with your boss, with your kids. It will bless you. Number two, live according to what it says. Do not be only a hearer of the word, but to be a doer as well. You can't just hear the Bible. You can't just know the Bible. You got to do the Bible in all your ways, right? Proverbs says, submit to him. You got to live it. You got to put it into action. Number three, seek first. We talked about that. Seek first. Matthew chapter six talks about seeking first. Not so much in chronological order, but in priority. In Matthew chapter six, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Everything you need, what you need to eat, what you need to drink, the clothes you wear, all your necessities, all your needs in life, your needs for relationship and companionship. Guess what? God wants to provide those things for you. He says he is our heavenly father. He furthermore says, which of you, if your son, if he asks you for bread, are you going to give him a rock? If he asks you for an egg, are you going to give him a snake? Jesus uses these ridiculous arguments 
to say, his heavenly father, who is better than any human human father, he's going to take care of his children. We complicate matters when we have the both and disease. We try to say things like, oh yeah, I want to please God, but I really do want to please myself too. And so I want both and I want my cake and I want to eat it too. Simplify your life, friend. Simplify your life. Seek first God's agenda for you and let God take care of everything else you need in life. But not only seek first, first seek. <laughs> not only seek first in priority, first seek in chronology. We talked about this. David says, at dawn, I search for you. What do we learn? Seek God first. And seek God often. Seek God first and seek God often. Number five, constantly fill your mind with God's truth. You know, five minutes a day, even if it's five minutes when you first wake up, man, it ain't going to cut it. You got to fill your mind with truth. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, all day long, bad messages are being thrown at you. You and I are obliterated by bad messages, discouraging messages, defeating messages, disappointing messages, and we need to fill our minds, feed our minds on good, positive truth. How do you do that? Fill your mind with God's truth. Well, try listening to Christian music, seeking godly counsel. Don't just ask people things whom you know they're going to just tell you what you want to hear. Well, don't do that. Seek godly counsel, wise counsel. Surround yourself with strong Christian friends and thank God always. Develop an attitude of gratitude. Now, sometimes we go through circumstances or experiences that, well, it's very hard to thank God for. I went through a stroke. Am I going to thank God for a stroke? If I run over a, a nail and get a flat tire, am I going to thank God for that nail? Am I going to thank God for a disease or a sickness? No. But you thank God in everything for everything. You thank God that he's in control. You thank God that he can turn any curse into a blessing. You thank God that we know that God causes all things to work together for the good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. No matter how bad things look right now, God can turn it around. Let God Turn your good, your bad, your ugly around. Doing these five things will keep us focused during the dry, tough, discouraging times in life. But you know, there are a couple of more things that we can do that will help us jump into this new year with momentum and freedom. But we will tackle them next week. Come back next week and learn these two final keys that will unlock the new life God has for you. See you then.